Thank you. The other thing that I put in my bio for uh, Sue is that I'm the mother of two elementary age school, school children here in Oak Park. And so it's really important for me to speak here tonight um, to see each of you here, parents and children, um, and talk and listen to what the community members, what the doctors have to say about drug use at OPRF, um, because my children are going to be coming here. And that 41% statistic that you brought out is frightening. And um, it's my hope that through cafes like this, discussions like this, young adult children like yourselves and parents, that by the time my fifth and third grader get third graders get here, we are below the national average. So You know, the title of tonight's uh, talk, The Ripple Effects of Substance Abuse by Kids and, the un and Underage Alcohol Use is, um, I think, quite poignant because when we talk about the use of um, drugs as kids, we think that it's what's just happening in our little world. As children, we really are just concerned about what's going on around ourselves. Um, but there is a ripple effect, and, and I think that that's why I was asked to be here tonight because I'm a judge that hears adult felony cases. I don't hear cases involving the misdemeanors or felony offenses that children do. That's a juvenile court judge. What I hear are cases involving misdemeanor and felony crimes that are committed by adults, mostly drug cases. And one of the programs or courtrooms that I'm assigned to is in a courtroom that deals with um, repeat drug offenders. And these repeat offenders, these repeat drug offenders come into our courtroom because they continue to do drugs and get caught and do crimes that are related to doing drugs and getting caught. And they need treatment. And so they're offered the opportunity for in custody treatment. That means treatment at the Cook County Department of Corrections. And it's a uh, 120-day treatment program, but to get into that treatment program, to find out if they're eligible, they have to submit to a, an investigation, a social investigation, investigation into their background, their um, work history, their prior criminal background, and their drug use. And I will tell you that in at least 90 or 95 percent of those investigations that I review, and I review all of them, when it comes to prior drug use, what's reported most often is that drug use started when these people were in their teens, 13, 14, 15 year olds. So it starts young. That is the norm. What isn't the norm, what isn't the rule, is a self-report of starting to use drugs when you're in your 20s or when they're in their 20s. I can count on one hand how many investigations I have seen where someone reported, I started using drugs when I was 27. It just doesn't happen. People who are in the criminal justice system and are looking for treatment, looking to get help, are there basically because it's their last stop before they go to the penitentiary and they see it as their bottom. So when I say that the title of tonight's speech, the ripple effects, of teen drug use and, and alcohol use is poignant. It is because I think I am here because I bear witness to the outermost ripple of that first joint that's smoked by a teenager. Now, the thing about drug abuse and the cases that I see in front of me is that it's non-discriminatory. I see people of all ages, of all colors, of all economic status. I see people who have no money, and I see people who have families who have money. And I want you to hear that statement I just made. I see people who have families who have money, because usually the people who are abusing drugs and getting arrested for it don't have money, but their families do, and I'll tell you, the children, the adult children who are 
coming to court because they've been arrested for po possession or selling drugs. They're surrounded by families, at least initially, and those families, their moms and dads, will put $5,000 on the line for the initial court appearance. They'll spend on an average of $25,000 to get their child the representation that they believe is necessary to get them through this crisis. Unfortunately, for a lot of these people, the crisis continues and continues, and down the road when these adult children are now in their late 30s, or late 20s, late 30s, and 40s, the families are no longer there, there there's really isn't any money. So there's a lot of cost, financial costs associated with um, substance abuse in teenagers. Not only are the financial costs for the attorneys, but there's financial costs for the treatment. There's also other costs outside of economic costs. We know that when parents find out that their children are using, there's a loss of trust. If you're arrested, or get involved in some sort of drug treatment program, there's a loss of opportunity. There's a loss to, to your ability to get jobs. And if you are involved in an incident involving drinking and driving, you're arrested, you're prosecuted, you can lose your driver's license. Any alcohol on a teenager in Illinois, the Secretary of State will take away your driver's license. You waited 16 years for that driver's license, it can be gone in an instant just because you picked up a beer and got behind the wheel. I see a lot of children here today, and, and I don't mean to be demeaning by saying, by calling each of you who are under the age of 18 children, but really, you're not adults yet. You're teenagers, but you're still children. You're still looking to adults to help you make decisions. And Mike Sheehan, who's the former um, sheriff of uh, Cook County, you had a poster made up, and I'd see every once in a while. And the poster said, talk to your kids now so that I don't have to later. And in my job, with the young people that I see coming through, I sometimes feel like a parent because I'll give you just a quick example. There was a young woman who was in front of me today. She was in on her second violation of probation. She was in on a drug offense, marijuana. That's what her probation was for. She was supposed to be in recovery. The first time she dropped hot, which many of, know, of you know means she tested positive, and we sent her home on her promise that she would get recovery, she'd work the program. Today she came in, and she came in, and she dropped hot again and I had to take her into custody. And she cried like a baby. She cried like the emotional baby that she is. She's still a young person. Her emotional growth has been stunted at the age she started using, which was when she was a teenager. So I, because she has no family members now in her life, have to give her a time out. She's sitting in custody tonight because she dropped hot. Maybe next week when I see her and she promises to get the program, she'll think twice before she smokes again. The bottom line here is parents, talk to your kids. Kids, talk to your parents. Your parents aren't there to do you any harm. They just want to make sure that you get on to your adult life with every opportunity that you have available to you. Thank you very much.